Since the 1870s, Seventh-day Adventists have been making sacrifices for their children to receive a uniquely Adventist education. Although an Adventist education comes at an extra cost, the benefits are plain to see and last in eternity. 81% of over 50,000 SDA students surveyed report attending an Adventist school is the most important thing that has helped them develop the religious faith. Research data from Value Genesis establishes a direct and traceable correlation between attending an Adventist school and denominational loyalty. Those students who attended more years of Adventist elementary school are significantly more likely to remain members of the SDA church. The same holds true for teenagers at Adventist Day Academies. The Value Genesis 3 research team has identified 29 major factors that influence students' faith. The results over the course of the last two decades have been startling. Consider these three factors. 38% of students reported their school's week of prayer impacted their spirituality very much. One third said their Bible teacher and Bible school classes changed their faith for the better. And a whopping 82% of students at Adventist schools said their faith was heavily impacted by attending an Adventist school. Per dollar spent, the most effective way of strengthening our church and winning souls for the kingdom is by investing in an Adventist education. It's no wonder that 71% of Adventist students report Seventh-day Adventist schools are better than public schools, and that 83% of SDA students from 6th grade to 12th grade said they like their school. When it comes to life choices, students at Adventist schools also exhibit a substantial difference when compared to their non-Adventist peers. Adventist students are far from perfect, but their behavioral choices are extremely encouraging. An estimated two-thirds of American junior high school students admit to watching pornography, but approximately 80% of SDA students said they never watch pornography. While 46% of public high school students report having had sex, only about 15% of SDA high school students admit having had sexual intercourse. Additionally, over 90% of SDA students report not smoking or using other drugs. Again, Adventist students are far from perfect, but there's obviously moral value in attending an Adventist school. There are also clear academic advantages in attending an SDA school. Based on the Iowa Test of Basic Skill Scores of 51,706 Adventist students, Adventist institutions scored higher than the national average in every subject category. This was the case in all grades and all school sizes, regardless of projected ability level. Taken as a whole, the academic performance of students enrolled at Adventist institutions is half a grade level higher than the national average. Amazingly, SDA academies in the North American Division have a 97.5% graduation rate, and 88.6% of these students also go on to college. We have much to improve upon as an educational system. We all know that, but the results from Value Genesis 3 and other studies are encouraging. Students at Adventist schools are more likely to be Adventists as adults, have strong Christian values, and perform better academically. Every day, parents, teachers, pastors, and church members across the world make sacrifices for Adventist education. It's this support that means an eternity with Jesus for so many. Please help Adventist education continue its 140-year tradition of bringing young people to Christ.
Hello everyone and welcome to our CPUC Voice of Youth this school year 2021-2022. We are very pleased to be with you all today, especially to those who have been with us since then and of course to those who have just joined us now. We are as well requesting you, my fellow Ambassadors of God, to please share the link of our program that will be aired every day starting today. We may not do this face-to-face -face as what we normally did before. However, we are still blessed that we are given this opportunity to study God's Word and to spread it worldwide as our commission despite the crisis we are experiencing. God is worthy to be praised for this timely program we each one must participate in this end times. We may, may all of us be inspired by the Holy Spirit and be rejuvenated to what is heavenly and spiritual. My dear brethren, stay where you are, keep watching, and allow the transforming power of our Heavenly Father dictate our hearts and minds today. God bless, and once again, welcome. For opening song, shall we sing our theme song, Happiness is the Lord. Happiness is to know the Savior, living a life within His favor, having a change in my behavior. Happiness is the Lord. Happiness is a new creation, Jesus and me. In close relation, having a part in His salvation, happiness is the Lord. Real joy is mine, no matter if the teardrops start. I found a secret, it's Jesus in my heart. Happiness is to be forgiven, living a life that's worth the living, taking a trip that leads to heaven. Happiness is the Lord. Happiness is the Lord. Happiness is the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the opportunity you have given us to lead and spread your gospel throughout the world. As youth in today's generation, participating in this mission is indeed a call. The very reason why we are here right now, pleading for your presence and the working of the Holy Spirit in both of our minds and hearts. Lord, we are praying for our speaker today, Shekinah Alvarez. May you give her your heavenly knowledge and wisdom. Be with her, Lord, for her to deliver the message well, for us to comprehend and understand the message. Be always in our hearts and minds, O God, for us to manifest it in our daily lives. Please forgive us for all of our sins. In the loving name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Lost it. 
haven't got a prayer. Jesus will still be Adventist Academy McCollum Incorporated, formerly Negros Mission Academy, has been a refuge of our youth since 1968. 53 years of changing lives. 53 years of molding minds. 53 years of nurturing souls. Through ups and downs, AAB stands firmly as a stronghold to our young people in the heart of Negros Occidental and beyond. Focusing on its mission, vision, and philosophy, AAB promotes the harmonious development of the mental. Physical and spiritual faculties. Uh, I hope and pray that uh, as we continue to have this program, the Holy Spirit will dwell upon each and every. It's been a great challenge to us. We all struggled, but we have overcome. We can do it again this year. With Christ, we can do it. Yes, we can all do it. Hi everyone, I'd like to invite you all to join Adventist Academy Bacolor. 
I love AAB. I love Adventist education. Hi everyone. I am inviting you to Adventist Academy Bacolod. I love AAB. I love Adventist education. True education means more than the pursuit of the certain course of study. It means more than a preparation of the life that now is. It is the harmonious development of the physical, the mental, and the spiritual powers. It prepares the student for the joy of service in this world and the joy of wider service in the world to come. AAB Adventist Academy Bacola, the refuge of our youth. everyone first of all we praise the lord for giving us this opportunity to study god's word before i start i would like to greet adventist academy bacolod faculty and staff hope channel bacolod staff negros occidental conference workers as well as all the viewers of hope channel bacolod via facebook and youtube and I would like to thank the Adventist Academy Bacolod for this wonderful opportunity and privilege to be here and share the message of God. Now, our topic for tonight is all about the Word of God. Now, when you read God's Word, do you marvel simply at the content of the book or at the one to whom it points? Nowadays, people, especially students like me, will most likely use their Bibles when it is a requirement for school, just like in our Bible class. Or sometimes people doesn't have time to open their Bibles because they are very, very busy, right? But when you have a time reading the Word of God, do you ask yourself, what does this passage tell or show me about the character and nature of God? Also, how does God want to use this passage of scripture to revive me, make me wise, give me joy, and enlighten my spirit? Now, God's ultimate goal is to glorify himself by making us more like him. As John Piper says, God is more glorified or, or most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. Paul tells us that God is a divine author of all the scriptures. In 2 Timothy 3 verse 16, it says, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. The scripture is God's revelation of himself and his plan of redemption, which he accomplishes through Jesus Christ. Let's study together how God speaks through His Word. But before anything else, let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for allowing me to be part of your ministry. Thank you for leading me so far and for your goodness upon me. Fill me with the same grace, wisdom, and power so that I might confidently and expressly teach your word for the deliverance of those enslaved in sin. Lord, I am unworthy, but make me worthy by cleansing me and filling me with your Holy Spirit. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let us find out what is the Bible according to the Word of God. First, the Bible is called the Book of the Lord. In Isaiah 34 verse 16 says, Search from the Book of the Lord and read. Not one of these shall fail, not one shall lock her mate, for my mouth has commanded it, and his spirit has gathered them. Now this verse is remark remarkable in numerous ways. It appears to be a genuine assurance that the previous prediction would be precise and down to the smallest details, and must thus be addressed to a future generation of readers. 
Now the second one is the Bible is called the Scripture of Truth. Now according to Daniel 10 verse 21, it says, But I will tell you what is inscribed in the book of truth. There is none who contends by my side against this except Michael, your prince. This passage demonstrates or tells us that everything that was written in the Bible or the Word of God is true. It is not fiction. It truly conveys the truth or facts since the Bible is the book of truth. Third, the Bible is called the Holy Scriptures. In 2 Timothy 3 verse 15 says, And how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Now, back when I was still a child, before I went to sleep, my mother would tell me Bible stories, particularly ones from the volumes called Bible Friends. Now, my mother will spend time telling me such stories and asking me what lesson I can take from them. She also discusses the lessons she gained from the narrative. And I will never forget the biblical tales my mom taught me because I can apply the principles that I learned in those stories to my own life. Just like we need to be prayerful to God like Daniel or we need to, be, to have faith and trust in God like Noah or David. And as a result, I grew up understanding that what, what is right and wrong to do in my daily life. And I believe that understanding God's word when you're still young gives you a lot of advantages. Now, let's proceed to the fourth one. The Bible is called the Lively Oracles. Now, in Acts 7 verse 38 says, This is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him at Mount Sinai and with our fathers he received living oracles to give to us now the fifth one the Bible is called the gospel of God now in Romans 1 verses 1 to 3 it says Paul a servant of Christ Jesus called to be an apostle set apart for the gospel of God which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son who was descended from David according to the flesh. Now let's remember these five things. The Bible is called the book of the Lord. Second, the scripture of truth. Third, the Holy Scriptures. The fourth one, the lively oracles. And the fifth one, the gospel of God. Now, let's proceed to the evidence of the origin of the Bible. Now, there are a lot of evidences that we can discuss this evening. But let me give you four evidences of the origin of the Bible. First, we have its fulfilled predictions put the stamp of divinity upon its pages. Now, in Isaiah 41, verses 22 to 26, it says, Let them bring them and tell us what is to happen. Tell us the former things, what they are, that we may consider them, that we may know their outcome, or declare to us the things to come. Tell us what is to come hereafter, that we may know that you are God's. Do good or do harm, that we may be dismayed and terrified. Behold, you are nothing, and your work is less than nothing. An abomination is he who chooses you. I stirred up one from the north, and he has come from the rising of the sun, and he shall call upon my name, and he shall trample all rulers as on mortar, as the potter treads clay, who declared it from the beginning, that we might know, and beforehand, that we might say, he is right. Now, this verse talks about God's challenge to the doubter. That's why, brethren, we should not doubt God's power because we, humans, can, cannot fathom the greatness of God. Now, in Isaiah 29 verse 4, it says, And you will be brought low from the earth, and you shall speak. And from the dust your speech will be bowed down. Your voice shall come from the ground, like the voice of a ghost, and from the dust your speech shall whisper. 
Now this verse from Isaiah, or verses from Isaiah, showed us that all the predictions that was written in the Bible happened and will happen. And this will remind us that we Christians should read our Bibles because there will come a time that we are not allowed to read or even touch the Word of God. Now, the second one, we have the accuracy and truthfulness of its message attest to its divine nature. In Genesis 1, verses 1 verse 2, it says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now, its record of creation is incompar incomparable. And also in Genesis 6 verse 7 and 8 says, So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. The Bible story of the flood is still another witness of the divine origin of the Bible. One of the things which proves the origin of the Word of God is the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Isaiah 7 verse 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. The narrative of our Lord's birthplace, birthplace adds a lot to the Bible's credibility because it was not just written in the Bible but it also happened in real life. Now the third one we have the evidence of the divine origin of the Bible has its singularity unity or the Word of God has its singularity unity. The Word or, of God or the Holy Bible was written by priests prophets, shepherds, and fishermen. Yet, do you wonder that it is one single unit from start to finish? What is so remarkable in most instances is that the writers of the books of the Bible had no contact with each other. They could not, con they could not compare notes. Yet, their message is the same throughout. In Isaiah 34 verse 16, it says, Seek and read from the book of the Lord. Not one of these shall be missing. None shall be without her mate. For the mouth of the Lord has commanded, and His Spirit has gathered them. Now, there are no compilations of records of 66 books that are as, as harmonious as the 66 books of the Bible. Let us always remember that. Now, the fourth one. Its moral majesty is refutable proof that God is the author. Now, when you say irrefutable, it means that it is impossible to deny that God is its author. Now, when we read the Bible, it gives the most elevated concept of God. Now, in Exodus 34 verse 6, it says, The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord, a God and merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Now, it, it also teaches the ultimate concept of morality, just like the golden rule that can be found in Matthew 7 verse 12 that says, So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Therefore, any time you need some guidance, answers, or anything else at this moment, turn to it. Turn to the Bible because it is right there next to you. Now, the enemies of the Bible predicted its doom over and over, and yet it is the most wanted and most both bought book of all books sold. It has been burned by the millions, yet it multiplied in increasing numbers. Now, did you know that the Holy Bible or the Word of God is the most revered or deeply respected book of all the books read by intelligent person or people? Now, empires have come and gone, 
yet the Bible which foretold their rise and fall still lives. It is at one and the same time the most ancient and also the most modern book to be read by modern men. Now in 2 Timothy 3 verses 15 to 17, let us always remember this verse. It says, And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for in instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Let me repeat this reverently. No other book has influenced the hearts and the lives of people as has the Bible. God's unique revelation of Himself in His Word is a breathtaking depiction of His grace. We couldn't know God unless He took the effort to show Himself to us. Now, He took the initiative and He did it through His Word. Now, David refers to God's Word using many words. Now, law, witness, precepts, um, commandment, fear, and rules. And David adds a quality to each reference to God's Word. Like perfect, um, sure, right, pure, clean, lasting, truthful, and righteous. And finally, David enumerates the effects of God's Word. It resurrects, makes wise, um, provides joy, and enlightens. Now, it is important to remember that God's Word is His revelation of Himself to us. As such, we do not worship the Bible. Let us always remember that, but rather the one who gave it. The reason the Bible is perfect, sure, right, pure, clean, enduring, and righteous is because God is. Now, His revelation reveals, reflects, and is consistent with His character and nature. The reason we become revived, wise, joyful, and enlightened by God's Word is because it points us to the one who can accomplish those things in us. God does not give us life, wisdom, and joy as gives outside of Himself. He gives us Himself, and we find all those things in Him. Let's remember that it is the Word of God that points us to the God of the Word. Through His Word, He also shows that our desire should be for Him. The Word of God shows that we do not live up to the demands of God's holy nature and that our desire is not for Him. It brings the lost man face to face with his need to be reconciled to this holy God and shows how that can take place only by repentance and faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Word of God also points a believer to the God of the Word, bringing about an ever-deepening love for the God who loved him first. God's Word should never be viewed separately from the, God's, from the God who inspired it. God did not reveal Himself in the Bible in order for us to see it as our most valuable possession. Instead, He sent us His Word so that we may understand how to regard and worship Him as our greatest value in spirit and in truth. God's Word is more attractive than gold and sweeter than honey because it, is, it, it brings us to Himself who is supremely desirable and deserving of our love. Our rising love for God's word should naturally lead to a greater love of God. Now, this doesn't mean that the word of God itself is not valuable. It is valuable as a good gift from a good God. It only tells us about God and what He is like, but it tells us about ourselves and what we are like. It warns us when we stray from God's standard, holiness. Um, it reminds us that the obedience to God's word brings reward, 
the word of God is the means by which the Spirit of God confronts a lost man with his sin and draws him to restore relationship with God through Christ Jesus. The word of God is also the means by which the Spirit of God sanctifies believers, calling us to walk in greater obedience. In John 17 verse 17 says, Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. But again, in all of this work, the word of God directs our desire to the God of the word. If we settle for a poor, poor quality intake of hearing, reading, and studying God's word, we severely restrict the main flow of God's sanctifying grace towards us. For those who use their Bibles little are really not much, not much better off than those who have no Bible at all. Now in Deuteronomy 8 verse 3, it says, And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that the man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the, of the Lord. The, let us always remember this. The Bible is meant to be bread for daily use not cake for special occasions. Now in Colossians 3 verse 16, it says, Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in our hearts to God. Let God's word fill your mind, rule your heart and guide your tongue and also to understand the word of God Rely on the Spirit of God. Brethren, let us put into our minds that the best book in the world is the Holy Bible. Amen? You know, it offers up new possibilities for the human intellect that will make a difference now and in the future. Brethren and young people, it is a great challenge for us to study the Bible or the Word of God in preparing for the coming of Jesus. And I pray that all of us will be there in heaven that God had prepared for us. May God bless you all tonight, and this is my prayer. For our closing prayer, I would like to request everyone to please bow down our heads. Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, Father, we are so thankful and happy for giving us the opportunity to hold the Voice of Youth program. Lord, thank you for sending your servant who inspires us by your holy word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path as we are traveling towards heavens in these last days. We pray that these words of life may continue to have impact on our daily lives and that you may give us insights as we approach your word, allowing us to discern the truth of the scriptures without relying on our own knowledge. Thank you, God, for bringing clarity, encouragement, and hope through your word. Help us, O oh Father, to become your faithful servant and to be part of your missionary work so that many souls will be brought before thy throne whilst waiting for your second coming. At this moment, Father, we pray also for our brothers and sisters who are suffering from COVID-19. We ask for their quick recovery and good health. May you give them strength to overcome their sufferings. Oh, Father, we entrust them to your gentle care, comfort, healing, and restoration of health. Lord, may you send us your Holy Spirit in everything we do. Thank you for the assurance that you will never leave us nor forsake us. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Adventist Academy Macaulay Incorporated, formerly Negros Mission Academy, has been a refuge of our youth since 1968. 53 years of changing lives. 53 years of molding minds. 53 years of nurturing souls. Through ups and downs, AAB stands firmly as a stronghold to our young people in the heart of Negros Occidental and beyond. Focusing on its mission, vision, and philosophy, AAB promotes the harmonious development of the mental. Physical and spiritual faculties. Uh, I hope and pray that uh, as we continue to have this program, the Holy Spirit will dwell upon each and every. This pandemic has been a great challenge to us. We all struggled, but we have overcome. We can do it again this year. With Christ, we can do it. Yes, we can all do it. Hi, everyone. I'd like to invite you all to join Adventist Academy of I love AAB. I love Adventist Education. Hi, everyone. I am inviting you to Adventist Academy of College. I love AAB. I love Adventist education. True education means more than the pursuit of the certain course of study. It means more than a preparation of the life that now is. It is the harmonious development of the physical, the mental, and the spiritual powers. It prepares the student for the joy of service in this world and the joy of wider service in the world to come. AAB, Adventist Academy Bacolod, the refuge of our youth.